Following the honorable traditions of Iber Arkham, you have organized a network of spies who are busy supplying you with the annual celebration that honors the ancestors of the Masala family is to be held the day after tomorrow on their estate. You've received your invitation and you set off with your companions. On the day of the glorious event, the guests are gathering in the atrium. Here comes the head of the family, Pompeius Masala, in his elaborate robes. You notice how long his eyes linger on one of your escorts, a beautiful woman. Livius Masala is a much manlier figure. To your surprise, you realize that he also has a younger brother, Vibius. The guests flock to the small amphitheater built next to the villa. In the first arena combat, they let loose a pack of wild animals, so the nobles can hunt them down with bows. Soon it turns out that you are just as proficient with your weapon as the commander of the guards. I redouble my efforts to win. I'll not lose to some peasant commander. He is a worthy rival. But finally, you win the game. You hear admiring muttering from the direction of the Quintus and Caracalla guests. But the Masalas don't look particularly glad that you have beaten their champion. Vibius Masala admires your skills with the bow, and he wants you to teach him to shoot. You are about to begin when his father interrupts the conversation. My son is going to be a general. Not a foot soldier, he says. He's leaving for a garrison at the wall in the morning. Aha. Uh -huh. It's getting dark. After the arena games, everyone walks back to the atrium to watch an ancient play. One of your men quietly tells you that he noticed a suspicious looking soldier talking to a gladiator at the well. It reminds you that this could be a good time to sneak around. Ah yes, sneaking around. That's what I do best. I will go to the well. You don't see anyone in the courtyard, but a brief inspection reveals that the well is empty and the carved stones form crude steps. You climb down and find a tunnel that leads to a gate. Beyond the gate, you see a bare hall and hear the gladiators talking. I will walk further. The tunnel widens into a large room, crammed with weapons and armor, all wrapped in rags and arranged in neat rows. You have the faint suspicion that you have found the ingredients of a coup in the making, and the only one who could have plotted this is Livius. You grab a dagger. Time to pay a visit to his quarters. You carefully pick your way to Livius' quarters with one of your men following you. You post him outside the door while you take a look around inside. Judging by the sparse furnishings, a young and dedicated soldier lives here. There is a small shrine by the wall. I open the closet. You open the closet, but only find some robes and a military uniform with a masterwork gladius in a gilded scabbard. Otherwise, it's empty. Ah. I peek into the chest below the small shrine. The chest is filled with personal keepsakes, simple jewelry, an almost empty perfume bottle. Things that make you think of a middle-aged noble woman. Oddly, there is also a simple knife that stands out from the rest of the items. But you cannot see its significance. Hmm. You hear a soft whistling from outside. It must be your soldier in the courtyard, and it means that someone is coming. You quickly leave the room 
Do you want to sneak around, or would you rather return to watch the play? There is no more time to sneak around. I must return before the play is over. You return just in time to hear the very last lines of the play. The guests are quick to return to the atrium. Pompeius must have noticed your absence, though, and he seems offended by your lack of interest. You decide to avoid him and mingle with the crowd. Dinner is a true feast, with such delicacies as wild boar in honey, and you also drink much of the treasured rare wine from the south of Britannia. You witness an exciting debate concerning mythology between a high-ranking Severus official and two senators of the Quintus family. Ooh. The argument is about Hercules. The senators think that he joined the gathering of the gods after his death, while the official points out that Ulysses met the great hero in the underworld. They can't persuade each other, and finally they ask your opinion on the matter. Hmm. Killed his own children, it's a mortal sin that the gods won't forgive. But he was a demigod. When he died, his mortal shell went to the underworld while the divine essence took his place among his gods. They all laugh, so you must have found an appropriate answer that suits everyone, and it even helped you to strengthen your political ties to these families. The dinner is over, and the guests withdraw to their rooms. This is the perfect opportunity to talk to old Pompeius Masala or visit his son. Which one will you choose? I talk to Livius Masala and hint that I'm willing to help him. You hint to Livius that it would serve you better if he were the leader of the Masala family, and you are aware of his plans. He answers very carefully. Let's say it's true. Why would I need your help? Because your plan is foolish and will lead to death. I have a better idea. Gladiators, really? Even if they manage to get past the bodyguards and kill your father, such things are impossible to conceal. Your glory would be very short-lived. Your father is well protected here in the villa, but I can make him leave the estates. If I persuade him to go with Vibius to the wall, you can deal with them both out in the wilds. You can blame the tragedy on the savages. Livius ponders this, then nods. I used the beautiful lady I brought with me to lure Pompeius away from the villa. You visit Pompeius and after some idle chatter, you hint that the lady in your escort shows great interest in him and she'd willingly entertain him. They obviously can't meet here, but if he joined Vibius in the morning... Uh... They could arrange something on the road. He falls for it. You call your most trustworthy guards to your room to discuss the plan. Which plan will it be, then? When Livius' men attack Livius, attack Pompeius and rescue Vibulus, he will be our witness. Or attack Pompeius. Ooh. Now, do I bring him in? I'm kind of inclined to go with the middle option. I'm going to be a bit of a jackass. Pompeius leaves in the morning with his youngest son. You follow him later. Around noon, you reach the particular patch of forest where the planned ambush is to take place. You spot Livius' men hiding in the woods. They spring out of the undergrowth and attack. 
in the confusion of the battle, it's quite easy to make young Vibius disappear. You make sure that he witnesses Livia stabbing his father, and then your men take him away from the massacre. The battle is soon over. The guards of Pompeius Masala try to stand their ground against the surprise attacks from two sides, but they perish one by one. Pompeius is dead, and Livia stands victorious among the dead. He is the new head of the family. The death of Pompeius comes as a shock to all family members. But your plan worked perfectly, and no one suspects anything. Livius takes over smoothly and immediately begins to build an army. For you, the sudden turn of events has brought a new ally. Glorious. Most glorious. Yes, my lord. Yes, my lord. Right, so... I believe next... I mean, it's at the eastern side, so it is that, I believe. I need to go... On my way. See. Okay, I can really zoom that forwards. Oh, hello. That is, uh... Uh, teleport markers. Right, so end turn. Mysteries of the Plague. It's all the way down here. On my way. So let's have a look, see at that. Oh, okay. No, I do not want to get into a war with the Vikings just yet. Or do I? That is the question. Do I want to get into a fight with the Vikings? Right, so I saved it serve. on the off chance that I'm my going way. where I don't need to go right now. All I know is there's a supposed... Uh, this is the artifact forge window. In this I can forge new artifacts from existing ones or sacrifice them for experience or to even gain essence for Hadrian's Reef. So, what, I... Right, okay, so I didn't want to do that right away. So, yeah, the uh, abandoned fort, it's not a quest thing, Ready it's to serve. Uh, something. Mysteries of the Plague. Only recently yep, yep. a deadly outbreak. On my way. There we go. Only recently, a deadly outbreak of a mysterious plague devastated the inhabitants of the Quintus estate. It's over now, but just as grave as its consequences are the rumors circulating about the origins of the disease. People talk of evil intent, and according to the gossip, there is a certain place, deep in the heart of the Quintus lands, where everything started. Indeed, this sounds suspicious. You decide to investigate the rumors and find the place where the plague started. If it's true, it may change things. You gather a small group and set out to discover the truth. However, according to custom, you can't enter a province of a noble family with armed soldiers. Uh, maybe it's custom, but it might be more enlightening if I take a look around uninvited. The place you seek is deep in the heart of the Quintus lands, and according to custom, you can't enter the province of a noble family with armed soldiers. 
You avoid the villages, so it takes a while until you get a glimpse of your destination. It's in the middle of nowhere. After a bend in the road, you meet a wanderer. It's a deserted part of the forest, and he has already seen you. It's too late to slip away. He might tell a Quintus patrol about your presence here, and there is a possibility that he knows who you are. Well, I can't risk him reporting my presence. For toi. You give a curt nod to the man, then step closer with a look of superiority on your face. He looks surprised, then hesitates. Then you simply stab him in the heart. It's all over in a very short time. Your soldiers look at you aghast, but you know that it was unavoidable. The growing number of dead crows littered on the ground tells you that you're getting closer to the place where the plague seems to have begun. You reach a glade where you see some empty wagons surrounded by the carcasses of horses and a dozen corpses. The canvas covers of the wagons are fastened down. I'll take a look inside those wagons, thank you very much. One wagon is crammed with the trappings of black magic. There is a carcass, but you've never seen anything like this. It looks like a hideous demon. You see a vial filled with some black fluid and another one which has been shattered. This is the cause of the plague, an experiment gone wrong. I douse the wagon with oil and let it burn. You set to work when one of your sentries comes running. A large group of soldiers is approaching fast on the road. We'll withdraw and keep an eye on these newcomers. The soldiers are battle-hardened veterans, and they definitely know what they are doing. They swiftly and efficiently set fire to the wagons, throw the corpses on the makeshift bonfire, and prepare to leave. Hmm. I'll ambush these assholes. They are worthy opponents, but with the element of surprise on your side, you win the battle, and with only minor losses at that. You also find a message from the Caracallas, describing the situation to the leader. It's obvious that their family is responsible for this abomination. The Caracallas. Scum of the earth. Now you have everything you need to prove that the Caracalla family used black magic and unleashed the plague. The only question is, what are you planning to do with it? Well, I feel obliged to inform the Quintus family. I am somewhat allied with the Quintuses. Let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's do this. You tell Horatius Quintus that the plague was caused by the Caracallas, who were meddling with the dark arts. Unfortunately, his gratitude is overshadowed by his anger, and he sends you away. The families must have settled the matter quietly, as you hear nothing about it later. Very good. Very good. Ooh, hello. Who, we, who do you belong to? Just in general, New Rome, by the look of it. Right. Can I get back to my territory? On my way. Not really. Let's have another look at diplomacy. Ooh, morality. Ah. Words of torture. Sounds glorious. Diplomacy. Quintus. Military training, trade agreement. Ah, I can do another trade agreement. Oh, what? Well, You're the one I haven't done a trade agreement with yet. Hmm. Yes, that skull is rather unnerving. Who are these people? They are the Windmarsh or something. Ballas! Ballas! Ballasborn! 
Ugh. Okay, the lands over here are a bit... Shh. Oh, curiosity. Yeah, you can't move the camera far enough around to peruse. Oh no, it's winter. Right, so I need 28 lore. Hmm. Makes sense to me. Two new quests, one's diplomacy based, one's adventure based. I am not getting into many battles in this campaign, am I? But I'm ready. Look at this. Look at this fellow. Melee damage, HP, you're ready to kick ass. All the ass. You actually have a skill point now. That's actually good to hear. So I can save it and I can max out the cleave. That's kind of cool actually. That could be useful. King of Ice. Freeze. Oh, that's actually kind of nifty. But I don't have the skill point numbers for this right now, so that's a sad thing. So, there's Troublesome Air and there's Adventure. Okay, so Troublesome Air I just click on and I will be doing Diplomacy. Village of Horsemen. So if I go to Location List, you're still building. Can't build anything. I never built anything here. And I don't have the money to... <laughs> Ooh. Okay. That's... Something I have to keep in mind for future. Ruined Abbey is part of the Guild of Outlaws. Of course it is. I am relearning. It has been the better part of a decade since I last played this. Yes, I will see you guys next time in the pit, where I will continue to be a tyrannical asshole who will do anything he can to screw over the Caracallas. Until then, farewell. <laughs>